If your HVAC just went out, in this video, we actually are interviewing a veteran contractor in the East Coast in the DMV area that's talking about the topic of repairing a system versus replacing and talks about some of the things that also go into consideration like insulation, as well as a host of other topics related to this exact dilemma. So if you found yourself in that situation, you should find this video very helpful. And if you want to watch the full version of this video, we'll make sure to link that at the end for your convenience. And most of the people that watch our channel, a lot of them are uh, you know, in the market Market for replacement, you know, and they take that kind of the consensus seems to be a lot of people kind of they find our channel and then they take their time and they might they might be watching our channel for you know six months or a year while they're making their purchase decision, but other people stumble upon us because they're in the position where their you know system just went out. And so they need to make a decision and they need to make a decision quickly. And so they're like, well, let me Google it before I, uh, you know, just like sign on the system and see what's out there. And sometimes it's, you know, if you go down those rabbit holes, there can be more, uh, more uh, options to choose from than you know what to do with afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> when someone's considering repairing versus replacing a system, right? Which is a question we get asked about a lot too. What are the, some of the considerations you talk about with them? When do you recommend repairing a system versus replacement? Is there like, is it like a dollar amount threshold? Is it certain repairs? Um, I mean, what are you running into kind of in the, the DC DMV area? Yeah. So when it does come to that, how do you discern whether it's time to just go with the repair that's been presented or actually go with the replacement? I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it. And let's start with what is the actual repair itself? Um, so similar to a car, when it comes to a major component, such as a coil, particularly a condenser coil or a compressor, those are very intrusive repairs. Um, it's very hard on the outdoor unit to go through a swap out like that. Um, imagine it to replacing a transmission in a car. That's what I would compare a, a compressor to. It's the heart of the system. And, you know, taking it out, putting it in, there's just a lot of things that have to go on with it. And uh, while you will have a, a warranty on that repair per se, uh, it may not hold, it may not take hold a year later. And those repairs can be very, very costly. I've seen compressor repairs cost as much as five and $6,000 depending on what kind of compressor it is. Um, so that's one of the things where it's how intrusive is the repair going to actually be? You know, so I've always talk, commented to my clients, if it's a refrigerant related repair, that's something where you really want to consider the cost and, and what's going to be the value add there, especially if you're having any time in the home. If you're going to be in the home for another five, six, seven years, you would be more inclined. It would be better for you to go with the replacement at that point, because it's going to be a very costly very intrusive repair and it may not last for you and then the inevitable happens after you've already spent all that that money on that repair now if someone's faced with a situation where they're having um some electrical failures a uh, circuit board and blower motor fail it can still be very expensive especially with the variable speed motors that are deployed in today's equipment it can get expensive i mean you could still be at about a three thousand dollar price tag for a repair like that that's where you want to consider how old is the equipment and how long am i planning on being in the house if the equipment has some age to it past 10 years, you should definitely consider going ahead and doing the replacement, especially if you're planning on being in the home for three to five years or more. Now, if you have a quick turnaround, if you're looking to be out of the house in six months to a year, you could comfortably go with the repair and, and feel okay about it, knowing that um, you took care of the problem, the system's going to work, uh, and you'll be able to pass the baton to the new homeowner without much fear of, of you know traumatic failure right after the fact. If the system is 15 years old, I would still recommend replacing it then at that point because you just, it's yeah. too old, you know, it's too old. So, well, and it doesn't, it's not like a dollar for dollar thing, but doesn't it also make the home easier to sell because it's not like, especially in a tight market? I think, I mean, I don't know how much you follow the, uh, the house. This isn't a housing market video, but I think, you know, inventory. Um, in certain regions has been um, piling up. I know Florida has like a ton of inventory that because everyone that moved there in 20 through 2022 yeah. is that now moving back to California, New York. And so there's a <laughs> lot of inventory. And um, and so like if you have a brand new system, that's a uh, something that the new homeowner doesn't have to worry about. Right. So it's still yeah. like a, an added value. It's definitely a value add. And, you know, the great point on on, you know, the real estate side of things, we do need to know what's going on real estate wise. We're primarily a residential company. And so knowing what's going on in our housing market is a good thing. The DMV is a very transient area. Uh, it's politically driven, obviously. There's yeah. also a lot of military around here. So generally speaking, there's roughly an 18 to 20 percent population changeover that's going to happen about every two years or so. Even oh, wow. more population. Yeah. And even more population changeover during the presidential cycle, because that's when you're going to have more administrations leaving, more of the military leaving and then more of an influx coming in. 
At that point, definitely a value add to have a new system with a clean warranty in place. That's that's the homes that we see selling the quickest are the ones that don't need much much love after the sale. You know, the, the homes that are yeah. turnkey, ready to go. Um, and people are more and more today spending less time looking at the beautiful kitchen and more time looking at the mechanics of the house. Am I going to have uh, a cost of an HVAC system or a water heating system six months after getting into the home? Those are things that are really raising flags with a lot of the buying public when it comes to real estate. Um, and so and I'm getting this information from my networking groups with all the realtors in there, by the way. So, yeah. you know, they're, yeah. we know what's going on. And, and so, we, you know, we work closely with a lot of realtors to help their clients make decisions on on it. Should we replace? Should we do this proactively to help add value to the home? help sell quicker than my neighbor's home if it's up for sale at the same time. So yeah, very important to, to have that consideration. And if someone is selling like that, you, you'd obviously, I'm assuming recommend something, would you still recommend a high efficiency or it's more of like a mid efficiency, just something that's, you know, gonna, because I feel like when people are buying a home, they're not asked, they don't really care so much about the efficiency. They just want to know that it's new and it's not going to break and be expensive. Yeah, no, you hit it on the head. And I, I definitely have that same conversation with my clients or with the realtors that who's it's their client. Um, I always tell them, look, if you're moving out of here, people are not going to care about, is it a 20 series at a 25 series at inverter? They just want to know how old it is. Is it, you know, again, yeah. am I going to have to replace this thing in two years once I move in or not? You know? And so having a newer system with a warranty that can be transferred over to them. Those are some of those mission critical moments where, yeah, you should go with an entry level system, mid tier system, have that warranty in place. It'll transfer over. And then the, the new buyer is going to have peace of mind coming into the house. Right on. And then as far as building considerations, because you kind of touched on it a little bit, I know the DMV or some of, I imagine some of the homes you're referencing are older um, and have been like, what is the age of some, like some of the older homes that you guys are seeing in, in terms of like building year and insulation and things like that? So this is an older area. There's a lot of aged sections and then there's like newer sections behind that. As you get closer to the city, you're going to find, and by city, I mean DC, you're sure. going to find much, much older homes. And then as you get further, they get progressively newer. Um, and typically, okay. this is a unique thing. About every five to 10 miles is another band of, of newness, you know? So okay. you get five miles down, you got homes that are about five years older. You get five five miles further than that, they're five years, uh, excuse me, five years newer. They're five years newer than that set of homes. So uh, as we keep growing outward, everything's just getting newer and newer. So there you have it. I mean, we've got homes from the 1700s in Alexandria all oh, the wow. way to new construction right up the street here, you know, that was just built last year. So, As a company, do you guys do insulation or do you work with other contractors that do insulation when you walk into a house and it's like the, the, the envelope is just not cutting it for like if someone wants to go with a heat pump, right? What are you guys running into? We will find, um, especially in the older homes, there's plenty of homes out there that either have like rock wool insulation, which is the very old stuff, or some homes don't have any insulation at all. Now, wow. we as a company don't provide that service, but we are partnered up with plenty of any energy um, efficiency, like home energy companies that do provide that service. So they'll come through. They'll be able to inject insulation into the wall space if there's none there. It's a pretty unintrusive process, actually. I was really surprised to learn uh, where technology is in insulation. Um, same thing up in the attics. They'll be able to either do um, you know, spray foam insulation, blow in fiberglass, whatever have you. They'll even be able to seal up where your uh, receptacles and light switches are on outside walls to prevent air leakage and gaps there. And that's where you can really take a heat pump system and make it not not just comfortable, but super efficient. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I was just curious because we definitely run into that out here, too, obviously, is when we'll see an attic and someone doesn't have, you know, they've got this much insulation when they should have this much insulation. And, uh, it, it, you know, it makes a huge difference. Like we we did insulation just in one section of our house because we, we only had an attic in one section. And the office went from feeling drafty. You could touch the ceiling. It was like ice. There was no literally no insulation. And uh, after the installation, you know, it's a lot more comfortable. So, well, and we have um, some unique tools also that help us with that specific thing you just talked about. So, when we have clients that have, you know, an isolated room or a space or like a closet that seems to be really, really cold compared to the rest of the space, we pull out our thermal imagers. I mean, we have thermal image cameras and we have the high end FLIRs that are really, really accurate. And we're able to locate and identify a lot of problems. I mean, we've had instances where we've installed inverter driven systems. And the home had some adverse reactions. And of course the client, you know, calls us, hey, 
ductwork is sweating. It's the system was just installed. You know, it's got to be an issue. We go out, we do a full analysis. The system's running fine. And then we go ahead and do a thermal image scan. And then we start to find these massive gaps in the home, the exterior structure points of the home that you can't see because of either siding uh, or brick or it's covered up by drywall on the inside, but there's literally massive gaps. And once we've identified that for the client, we're able to scan it with the thermal imager, snap a picture of it for them, give them a full write-up and report, and then put them in contact with a home energy company that can help to resolve that issue for them. Um, and that's been met to a great deal of success and happiness with our clients because we've become a one-stop shop at that point. While no, we're not the, the next contractor doing the work, we can put you in touch with somebody who's very reputable that we're willing to recommend to you. If we recommend them, we're putting our stamp on them that they're going to be a good contractor for you. Right on. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you found this content helpful. And if you did, please smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you'd like to know how you can connect with Dario, if you're in the DMV area, we'll make sure to link his information in the description so you can get in touch. And if you happen to be outside of that area, but you still would like a referral to a contractor, that's literally why we created the HVACDopeShow.com. So that will be linked in the description as well. And that's a free service where we'll connect you with a contractor in your area. Now, this is currently in a soft launch beta mode. So if we don't get back to you right away, that's just because we don't have a contractor readily available in the market that you inquired about. But again, hopefully you found this content helpful and we will catch you on the next episode.